Hi everyone, I'm Faye, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing this look. So this is very much inspired by Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I'm gonna put up some images. Um, I'm obsessed with that advert. I love the new Pillow Talk advert. They look so beautiful, all the models. The makeup is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. If I had the money, I would go out and buy Charlotte Tilbury products, absolutely. Um, I do not. They are expensive, they are a bit of a splurge. So I thought, you know what, it's pink tones. I probably already have them. Let's delve through what I already have and make this look with things I already own. And you can do exactly the same. Okay, let's jump into the tutorial. Let's get started. Now I've got my uh, moisturizer on my face already, but I haven't put any primer on. So because this is a really glowy look, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of something mattifying here in the center of the face just where I have a tendency to get a tiny bit of oil. Okay. And that, by the way, was the Ryor moisturizer. Um, Tati mentioned it, tried it a long time ago on her channel, said it was good, and I've been in love with it ever since. Okay, so instead of the Hollywood Flawless Filter that Charlotte Tilbury has, and I will uh, insert a picture, I'm going to use the Kiko Less Is Better Fluid Highlighter. Now this, you know, was from uh, one of their temporary ranges, the Less Is Better range, but really any glowy primer, any glowy sort of highlighter that's not super metallic, that's just got a nice glow, will do. So you can see it has a sort of beige colour and when I put it on the face you'll see it has a really nice glow. So I'm going to go in just with my hands and apply this pretty much everywhere. Now I'm going to use a medium coverage hydrating foundation because it is again quite a glowy hydrated look. I've got the picture on my iPad over there so I can keep looking at it. So I'm going to use the Body Shop Moisture Foundation, this one here. I'm in shade 02. And what I'm actually going to do is take a palette, a uh, little metal one I've got here, and I'm going to mix it with some of the highlighter just to make it a really, really glowy base. I'm gonna go in and apply this with a beauty blender, which I have here already dampened. And don't forget to blend down the neck, of course. Having done that, I'm going to go in now with liquid highlight. Now Charlotte Tilbury has those beautiful highlighting ones, again I will put a picture up. Um, I obviously do not have those because I do not own any Charlotte Tilbury products as much as I would like to. Um, so what I'm going to do in order to get that is mix two products together. Now here I have the Cover FX Drops, these ones are Moonlight and I have the Gosh Lumi Drops. Now the Charlotte Tilbury product is um, a pale golden highlight. So I have the gold here from Moonlight, but this is too intense and a little bit too metallic. So by blending the two together, I'm gonna get a more natural highlight because the, um, the Gosh Lumi Drops are a very natural formula. And I'm also gonna get something which is really nice and blendable. Now, I really like to go in with liquid highlight straight after foundation while the foundation is still tacky because that means it's easier to blend the liquid highlight into the foundation. If you wait till the foundation is really dry, and this is a particular problem if you use a matte formula, then when you try and blend a liquid highlight on, it tends to be more of a streak. As you try and blend it, you take off coverage from the foundation because the foundation's already set down. So really want to work relatively quickly, particularly if your foundation is matte. So I'm going to pop a bit of the Gosh one here onto my palette, and then I'm going to add some of this from Cover FX. I'm going to apply the highlight with a brush. This is the sculpting brush from Real Techniques. I love these, I have two of these. I think they're great for highlight and for contour. You can see now I have my mixture of highlight on my palette. I'm gonna go in with my brush. 
Here I'm just trying to evenly distribute the product across my cheekbones, blend it in. As you can see, it's blending in really nicely and that is because the foundation is still damp and a little bit more movable. Now this is a super glowy look. I can see from the picture that she does have quite a glow on the forehead area, but not so much on the brow bone. So I'm going to keep it above the eyebrow. You can see now I am very, very illuminated. <laughs> now that the highlight is done and nicely blended into the foundation, I can go in with my contour and my concealer. Um, I may go back in with a little bit more highlight after my concealer just to make sure this area here isn't mattified by putting concealer on. I'm using the Age Perfect from L'Oreal and I'm also using the Kiko Skin Tone Concealer in shade 2. Personally, I'm not a fan of applying too much concealer. I'd rather just put it exactly where I need it. I'm going to add a bit of the lighter one under the eyes as well. And then a tiny bit more highlight. Time for cream contour. Again, Charlotte Tilbury has that duo, that highlight wand and the contour. I'm going to use this NYX one that I have already. Does anyone else have a really hard time getting their contour under their cheekbones even? Like, maybe I should be applying the left cheekbone with the left hand? And I'm going to take my uh, second brush, the same one I used for highlight, but this is just another brush. It's exactly the same type of brush, I believe. Yes. I'm going to take a smaller sort of kabuki brush here. This is from Rodal and it says it's the highlight brush, but I just use it to bring this contour round just gently. And because it's smaller, it doesn't spread it quite as much. Okay, how does that look? Hopefully it looks reasonably well blended. I do just like to go over again with a beauty blender <laughs> over the top of everything to make sure there aren't any harsh lines. Ooh, hair's getting in the way. With all that done, we can finally move on to powder. Now, Charlotte Tilbury it's kind of well known for having that pressed powder that is not translucent, it's a tinted powder. I have one here. This is by Kiko in shade one, this is Radiant Fusion. However, I'm not a particularly big fan of powders like this when I have quite a lot of makeup on. I like them if I'm doing quite lightweight makeup, but when I have more heavier makeup on like I have right now because I have a lot of different cream products going on. 
I prefer to use a translucent loose powder. So that is what I'm going to use because that's my preference. So I'm going to use the Gosh Primer and Set. And I don't want too much, so I'm going to tap it off. And I'm being careful not to take too much powder out from the far corner of the eye here because I have a lot of highlight here which I want to keep, I want to keep naturally glowy. So I'm mostly focusing the powder here on the centre of my face, just blending into the edges of the highlight here. And I'm going to take a slightly bigger brush just to put a very fine layer of powder over the forehead and over the lower area of the jaw. So this is another Real Techniques brush. I mean, basically, they're the only brushes I have, let's be honest. I think for a lot of people, most of their, particularly their face brushes, are Real Techniques brushes. Okay, so now blush. Now, Charlotte Tilbury is famous for what is known as the nipple blush because it looks like a nipple. Now, I don't have a blush that looks like that. So what I'm going to do is use two different products to recreate the kind of look that you would get from using that two-toned blush. So first of all, I have a very pink blush here. This is from Makeup Geek. It is called Blind Date. Um, I'm going to use that sort of the outside area of the blush that Charlotte Tilbury has and then here in the Hourglass palette I'm going to take this product here and use that as a little pop on the centre. Because I do still have cream products on my face that haven't been set with powder I'm going in with my blush in more of a dabbing than a swiping motion. So in the picture um, her blush is away from the centre of the face. It's more taken up and around the temple area, looking at this. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take a little bit more blush in this sort of area here. even that's the question and then for the pop center of the blush I'm taking my hourglass palette it's going into this one here very 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 glow I am going to go off camera and do my brows because that will take me a while and it will be boring, okay? I don't think anyone wants to see me do my brows. I will be right back. I am back. I've done my eyebrows off camera and I use, where have they gone? Here they are. I use two NYX brow pencils. I use ash brown and espresso. Okay, and now I have realised I do not have eyeshadow brushes. One second. Okay, eyeshadow brushes, have those now. Now, one thing I do like about Charlotte Tilbury is that she is not afraid of putting some shimmer in the crease. So, I'm going to double check my picture again. My, <laughs> my iPad screen keeps turning off. Okay, there I have it. I have it here. Um, so, you can see definitely that there is some matte pink. There is matte brown. There is pink shimmer and there is champagne shimmer. Now this is the quad. I'm going to put up a picture of the eyeshadows. The matte brown eyeshadow looks quite pink toned. It is quite warm. I actually went into store and swatched it on my hand and I have found a uh, brown in this palette, which is I think the most similar one I own and I have all of the other shades. And this is the thing about these Charlotte Tilbury looks is they are beautiful and I'm sure the products are completely gorgeous and very high quality. But in terms of the colors and the tones that you need to get this kind of a look, 
a lot of us will already have these kind of pinks in our collection, already have these kind of highlighters. And so going out and spending more money is something that you only really want to do if you have that money and you really want those products. Like if this was my wedding day, maybe I would go and I would splurge a bit and buy some Charlotte Tilbury. But as it stands, I can recreate this look with my own products that I have already. So going into eyeshadow, I have the following ones to show you. They're quite similar. So this is a really old Clinique duo that I have. So we have this pink here. I'm trying not to tip the little thing out. This pink here is pink with a gold reflect. Really, really similarly from Kiko, there is this shade, which, can I read the back? No, I cannot read the back. It's just a magnet on the back. I will try and find out what shade this is and put it in the description box. Um, then for the more pinky gold, I have Kiko here. This is 219. And this looks very pink in the pan, but also has a gold reflect. Um, yes, for the brown, I'm going to be using probably this shade here in this palette, which is from Rimmel. This is the Spice Edition of Magnifies. And then for the matte pink, I have, first of all, I have my blush that I already used, but I also have a couple of shades in my little uh, palette here. So I have another um, Kiko shadow here, which is matte. I have a darker pink, which is matte as well. So with those, and also with, if I need a little bit more champagne, this highlighter, this Glow Fusion highlighter from Kiko, I basically will have all the colours that I need to do the look. I'm starting with that matte pink blush and just blending that into the crease. I'm blowing this out quite a lot you can see I'm just really blending out those edges so that it really covers most of the eyelid area then the brown on a slightly smaller brush so I'm going slightly more into the crease and onto the outer edge creating the slightest sort of wing out at the very far corner of the eye so windscreen wiper motions swiping motions circling motions oh back in with the pink okay just gonna blend those edges uh, blend, 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 blend. Okay, this is the light pink from Kiko. This has a gold reflect. There's shimmer in the crease in the picture. So that is what I am doing. Going in with that. Blah, 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 blah. Blend, 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 blend. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so using my finger now, I'm going to apply a bit more of that same shadow to the lid. Using a finger just makes it a little bit more intense. If I did this again in the future, I think I might actually use a bit of uh, setting spray and going in with the stronger pink. You can really see that one's quite uh, quite glowy, definitely shows up more than the Kiko one. Well, the both Kiko ones, the paler Kiko one. I'm going to go back in with the brown with a smaller brush, just in a slightly more concentrated area. So going in with that really small brush now, I'm trying to create just a little bit of a winged out eyeshadow at the edge with that brown shadow. You can see in the picture she does have a sort of swoop, as I like to think of it, at the outer edge of the eye. So I'm just trying to get that there. It looks weird fast forwarded, but you know, if I didn't put it in fast forward we'd be here forever. And I am going to take a little bit of that Kiko powder just on the brow bone because she doesn't have much shimmer on the actual brow bone area. For the under eyes I'm going to just use this brush I'm going to take a small amount of the pink and a small amount of the brown. So I'm going to use this one. I'm pretty sure the brush I'm using here is actually a concealer brush, but really you can use your brushes for whatever you want. 
and a little bit of brown shadow. Sorry, I keep having to switch between palettes. This is the only thing, of course, is if you're going to replicate a look and you don't have all the shades in the same palette, you're going to constantly be going, <gasps> where is it? Uh, a little bit of brown. I'm actually going to take just a hint more of matte pink this time I'm going to just take this one here and add that there we go that'll do liner now believe it or not right now I don't actually have a brown pencil liner which is really weird I think I just threw one away because it was looking a bit old and I ordered a new one and it hasn't arrived yet so I'm going to be using this liner is a gel eyeliner this one is from the body shop and honestly it's so good because once you put this on it does not budge like it does not go anywhere so I'll pop this on and I will speed it up so that we're not here forever oh and it comes with its own little brush by the way I had a bit of a battle with this eyeliner and that's really just my fault because this is a great eyeliner, this Body Shop eyeliner, but it is a gel eyeliner in a pot and they do dry out. And it's not like this is completely unusable, but really I should probably buy a new one because it's a little bit dry. And wing liner is hard enough without making my life even more difficult for myself. But, you know, whatever. We made it work. It took a while, I will admit. I mean, I had to swap brushes. And one of the good things about it is it's not dry straight away, like you've got a second to work with it. So if you accidentally extend your wing too far, like I did, you can go in with an eyeshadow brush and just sort of blend the edge away. Um, you know, ideally you get it right the first time, but a lot of the time with wing liner, you don't. <laughs> At least I can be completely safe in the knowledge that once it's on it's like on that stuff is on that stuff is not going anywhere okay and she does have liner going all the way in but i'm going to be very careful not to get it too thick so i'm going to just take my little angled brush dip it in a bit of eyeliner go in from underneath And then connect it at the top there. I realise I do end up here with a slightly longer wing than the model has, but that was just a side effect of me trying to do winged liner, to be honest. I feel like whenever it starts going wrong and you're trying to get them even, they always just end up quite a bit bigger than you intended. and. I'm pretty sure that happens to everyone. Oh my god, the eyeliner took ages, but it is finally, finally done. Okay. I honestly hate doing wing liner so much. Like, I, I never do it. I never do it because it's too much effort. And I feel like when the camera's on as well, there's just so much pressure to get it right. Like, it's even harder than normal when the camera is going. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that light pink on just a little smudger brush and make sure it's around the inner corner here. And I'm going to take a little bit of highlighter, if I can see where i put it Aha. and i'm going to use a little bit of this as well
mascara time. So I use two mascaras usually. I need a waterproof formula because my eyes water. So I have the Lash Paradise in the waterproof formula. But I like to put um, this one on before. So this isn't waterproof. But what I like about it is it has the uh, plasticized wand. Whereas this has the normal bristle wand. And I like using the plasticized wand first. Just so that I can really separate out and lengthen the lashes and get them really fanned out. And then I'll go over with the waterproof formula. Now the Lash Paradise in waterproof. Do you ever find with mascara, one eye always goes so much better than the other? I don't know what that's about. Always. And I might have got a little bit on my eyelid. Did I? Ah, oh, maybe it was alright. Okay, um, on the bottom lashes I use a separate mascara. I use the Innisfree Skinny Waterproof Microcara. My bottom lashes tend to smudge and I find that, well to be honest, like any mascara I use will eventually transfer a little ring of grey into my under eyes because my under eyelashes are long and they touch my face, but this I find is the best. I'm going to put a little nude eyeliner in the waterline and then we will move on to the lip. That just makes the eyes look a little more awake. Okay, for the lips, I have a few different products. So, the lip liner, Pillow Talk, very famous lip liner. I have this Gosh one in Antique Rose. You can see this is the colour of it. I'm overlining my lips slightly just on top like my bottom lip is a little bit fuller so i just keep to the natural lip line but on the top lip i overline a little bit just up on either side of the cupid's bow just to give myself a little bit more of a i don't know plump isn't the right even with an overlined lip i don't exactly have plump lips i was not blessed in the lip department but you know it helps balance out my uh, slightly larger lower lip and i'm going to fill in just at the corners Okay, so that is my lip liner. And these are really nice lip liners from Gosh. They're really creamy. For lipstick, I found this in my handbag. And it is just a plain nude pink. I found this in the sale. Actually, it's from Topshop. Okie dokie. Now her lips in the photo are quite light, a little lighter than this one. You can see. Uh, so I'm going to take this lip crayon from Helen E. This is the colour Candy Floss and it's a very pale pink. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in the centre just to lighten up the lipstick. Okay, so we are pretty much done. Now, 
the look that I've been recreating, I think she does have a matte lip. However, oh, maybe not. Okay, so in the actual uh, little pack that you get, if you buy the, um, I'll put a picture up on the screen, it's like a little set, you get, as well as the palette, the blush, the lip, liner, the matte lipstick, you get a mascara, you get brown eyeliner, you also get the Pillow Talk Lip Luster. Now the closest thing I found that I already have in terms of nude glosses is this one from Tarte. Now I got it in a little set like, a, well I say little, it was quite a big set of lots of different shades of glosses in this mini size. So this doesn't actually say what colour it is on the tube, it has like a little weird stamp like number on the bottom which I don't know if it's relevant or not but I will look on the website and find out which one this is and then I will link it below so I'm going to pop a little bit of this gloss on top of the lipstick and then I think we are done and you know what? I think this turned out okay. If you look at the... I'm going to hold it up, see if it will work on my iPad. I mean, who knows? There is the... Oh, ring light. is Okay, I'm going to put up a picture on the screen. Considering I'm not using any Charlotte Tilbury products, I'm just trying to find things in my collection that match the colours, that match the formula, the shimmer the highlight, the everything, I think this turned out pretty well. I'm actually going to put a touch more bronzer on, I think, just to add a little bit of extra contour. It's my bronzer blush, bronzer blush, bronzer brush. So I've just, I'm just going to use the L'Oreal Back to Bronze. Um, this is just a good, good, reliable bronzer, to be honest. Another Real Techniques brush. And we're done. Get a little closer for you. So you can see really beautiful pinks, very glossy, very shimmery lids. I think replicating the eyeshadow was the hardest thing just because I'm taking from lots of different palettes, lots of different brands. And um, so yes, with an eyeshadow palette, you already do probably have the colors somewhere else. But for the convenience, if you want to do the look or if you want to travel and do the look, like say you're a guest at a wedding and you're traveling and you want to do this eye look, then maybe it is worth buying the palette just so that you don't have to take lots of different products with you so that you're not switching around. You've just got them there and ready to go. Um, I do think, yeah, the shadows were the hardest to replicate, particularly that brown that they have, that sort of... You can see in the image of the shadow and when you see it in store, it is kind of pinkish hue. Now we used a warm tone brown, that was the closest thing I could get, but it wasn't exactly right. Um, but you know, I'm still very happy with the way this turned out. I should probably take my hair down. Wow, my hands are like covered in makeup, but hi. A little more glamorous than uh, <laughs> my hair in a bubble. I am actually going out this evening, so now at least I have a face that's ready. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to just delve through your own collection, look at what you already have, see if you can recreate these looks with things that you already own rather than having to go out and spend more money. Obviously, this is nothing against Charlotte Tilbury or the Pillow Talk collection. I'm sure those products are absolutely beautiful and lovely and worth buying. Um, if you have the money, they are expensive. Um, yeah, maybe if you're treating yourself, you're getting married, something like that, you want to splash out, that's wonderful. But the thing is with pink tones like this, is most of us who own a reasonable amount of makeup probably do already have them. So you can save money by really just delving through what you already own and just having a little practice to recreate the look as I have done. Um, so I am going to do the medium look as well, as I have dark hair, I feel like I can also work that one 
um, even though I'm pale. So I will put up a picture of that. That is what I'm going to do next in terms of makeup looks. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.